Do you record with a dynamic microphone that requires a lot of gain? Or do you have a preamplifier that's a little bit weak and maybe introduces too much noise into the signal chain? Perhaps you need a microphone activator. Well, hello there. This is Jake from the Chasing Quality Podcast. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Cathedral Pipes Durham Mark II Microphone Activator. Uh, A microphone activator will sit in your signal chain between the microphone and your preamplifier. It's designed for dynamic microphones and sometimes ribbon microphones. And what it does is it uses the 48 volt phantom power from your preamplifier to provide a preamplification stage uh, as an initial preamplification stage prior to getting to your normal uh, preamplifier audio interface. This can sometimes help to control uh, noise that is introduced when you have to turn up your pre- preamplifier gain, uh, you know, really high, like 75, 80, 90 percent. That will often drive the preamplifier too hard and introduce a lot of noise. And that noise doesn't just appear in the silence, but it also gets uh, modulated on top of your voice signal. So it's not good uh, and you don't want it. If you've got, if, if you've got a, a microphone such as a Shure SM58 or even more so a Shure SM7B, anything that requires a significant amount of gain, you may want to consider a microphone activator. Uh, or if you have a preamplifier such as the Zoom H4N Pro field recorder uh, that does not have very powerful preamps, you may also want to use it in that case. This uh, Cathedral Pipes Durham um, is a very good deal, in my opinion. It's $65, uh, which is at the lower end of the cost spectrum for, uh, for these microphone activators. And I think that's partly because you order directly from them through their website. Now, Cathedral Pipes is a company out of Orange County, California. Uh, I believe all of their devices, including, um, including the Durham, are made in the USA, handmade in the USA. They specialize in high-end uh, ribbon microphones. It's a very small company. I am in no way affiliated with Cathedral Pipes. They did not supply the microphone activator for me for this review. I purchased it um, with my own money. I just think it's really cool. And anytime I can um, purchase from some of these smaller companies, I I really like to do that to support their business. Um, So we're going to do – we're going to run through a couple tests today. First, I'm going to test the Shure SM58. I got two of them, and I'm going to record them into my Motu M2. Um, And then we will also use those same microphones and try them in the Zoom H4N Pro field recorder. And then afterwards, we'll analyze the audio and see if we can tease out a difference in the noise levels. I'm going to do no real post-processing to any of that audio. The only audio I'm post-processing is going to be this audio right now for the intro, which I'm actually recording on a condenser microphone, my Cam MC3. Um, But but for the test audio, no post-processing other than potentially some gain. And that gain is simply to level, uh, to to provide even levels for those um, for those test cuts. All right, let's get started. Okay, for the first test, we're going to be recording into the Motu M2 audio interface, which is a very nice, clean, quiet uh, audio interface. But for the Shure SM58 and likely for the Shure SM7B, even more so, you do have to turn the gain up to about 85 to 90 percent to really get. Um, you know, to really get this, the signal uh, where you want it when you're recording voice, which is about negative 12, negative 15 dB or so. So we're going to check it out to see if using this Durham Mark II actually can reduce some of that noise uh, and keep it nice and quiet. Uh, so we've got two Shure SM58s. Channel 1 is going in uh, through the Durham Mark II activator into the Motu M2, and Channel 2 is going directly into the Motu M2. The gain for channel 1 is set at about 52 to 55%. The gain for channel 2 is set at about 90, perhaps even as high as 95%. It's hard to really tell on there. Uh, so that's so it's almost driven all the way up. But the levels, as I'm seeing them currently on the device, um, they are even. Uh, I am going to speak at roughly one fist away from both of these microphones. I've got them slightly angled. Hopefully, we will avoid some of the sibilance. Um, and let's, let's run a couple tests. We'll do the intro first. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Quality. This is episode 99,000. I am Jake, and with us, as always, is RJ. RJ, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, and now let's record a moment of silence. Very 
Very good. Let's 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 hope that we got it that time. Okay, and now we're going to start recording with the Zoom H4n Pro uh, using the Shure SM58. One thing to note about the Zoom H4n Pro is that when you're turning on phantom power, you don't have the choice between just channel one or just channel two. It's either both on or both off. So I have to record these two tracks separately. Um, right now I'm recording through the mic activator into the H4n Pro. I'm about uh, a little more than a fist away, and I'm going to try to keep that controlled for when I go to record um, without the activator. Let's do the intro, and then we'll do some silence. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Quality. This is Jake with you, and with us as always is RJ. RJ, how are you doing today, sir? Fantastic. All right, and now let's record a moment of silence. Okay, so that is, uh, that's with the gain for this channel set to 25, 25%. That's pretty low on the H4n Pro. That, that means that this thing is doing a pretty, pretty great job of uh, bringing up the, the, the volume on this dynamic microphone. Let's now switch to the other microphone and see what it's like without the activator. Okay, and now we've got the uh, microphone activator taken out of the signal chain, and it's now just the microphone directly into the Zoom H4n Pro. I'm talking, it again, just over a little bit more than a fist away from the microphone. I was going to put this microphone into the Zoom H4n, but I decided to go ahead and use the exact same microphone, just in case there's a discrepancy between these two microphones, trying to keep it as controlled as possible. Same microphone, same stand, same position in the room, going straight into the Zoom H4n without an activator. Let's do the show intro. Oh, by the way, I've got the gain set for this microphone to 90%. That's 90% versus the 25% that I had to set the um, set it when I was using the micro microphone activator. So now without the activator, I had to set it to 90%. Let's do the show intro. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Quality. This is Jake with you, and with us as always is RJ. RJ, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, fantastic. Okay, now let's record a moment of silence. Okay, let's go analyze the results and see what we've got. Okay, so now we're going to head over to Adobe Audition, and we are going to analyze our test samples. Let me move this microphone away a little bit here. All right, so first up we have the, uh, this is the test sample from the Mo2 M2 using the Durham activator. Uh, we're going to play the whole thing. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Quality. This is episode 99,000. I am Jake, and with us as always is RJ. RJ, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, and now let's record a moment of silence. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. Let's let's we're going to select the silent part here, and we're going to use the frequency analysis tool uh, that's built into Audition. I've got it on linear scale, and I've got it zoomed all the way out so we can see the entire um, the entire level, all the way down to negative three hundred dB. So we select the portion of silence and we click scan selection. This now shows us what is essentially um, the silence. Uh, I'm going to zoom in actually. Uh, to because we're going to have a very small difference in scale here. All right, so this on average, it looks like to me that we are at negative 102. It, it starts off pretty low there at 102, and then maybe maybe up to 101, um, but maybe 101 and a half. So let's go ahead. Let's call it negative 101.5. DB is the noise that we are seeing from the from the Durham. Now let's head over to the uh, test excerpt for the Mo2 M2 SM58 without the Durham activator. Let's play it. Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Quality. This is episode ninety nine thousand. I am Jake, and with us as always is RJ. RJ, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, and now let's record a moment of silence. Uh, 
Okay, so now let's, uh, we're gonna select the silent portion, scan selection, and just like with the other one, we're gonna need to zoom in a little bit more here to be able to get a better idea of what the sign. All right, so here, if we look down toward the lower end of the spectrum, first of all, this this spike here is probably a 60, it's probably about 60 hertz. What is that, 47? Um, yeah, it's around 47 hertz, 50 hertz, 60 hertz. That's gonna be the hum that you get from just the general electricity. If you do a high pass filter, you're gonna knock that right out. Uh, I don't consider that noise as part of the signal chain at all. All right, so we've, we've, we've scanned the selection and this is giving us our general noise floor. It starts out at right around negative 100 and then throughout it creeps up all the way and starts tickling, starts kind of kind of touching on negative 98. Uh, I'll be nice and I'm gonna call this negative 90, negative 90, 99, all right? Uh, I would say it's more like 98.5, but we're gonna say negative 99. Uh, so that right there shows us that, um, and by the way, I didn't have to boost, I didn't have to amplify either of these signals um, in post. Uh, they came out pretty darn level and nothing was changed. So going into the Motu M2, the SM58, using the cathedral pipes reduces the noise, at least according to this experiment, by 2.5 decibels. In my opinion, that's that's a pretty good, pretty good difference. All right, let's head over to our recordings from the from the zoom. I think we're gonna see a bigger, more drastic difference here. All right, so the zoom with the Durham, this is the zoom with the Durham. If you remember, uh, using the Durham on the zoom, we had the gain set to about 25, 25%. So let's play this and see what it sounds like. Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Quality. This is Jake with you, and with us as always is RJ. RJ, how are you doing today, sir? Super, thanks for asking. Fantastic. All right, and now let's record a moment of silence. Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to another. All right, so that was the that was the silence. Uh, you're likely not hearing this. I'm not amplifying the silence at all. Now, I will say that in post, I had to amplify in order to level these out. I did not have to increase the gain for the Durham. Uh, I had it already leveled out at uh, about negative four, negative five dB as my peak, and that's generally where I, I I want it when I when I save my audio or when I actually do my post production. So I was already there. Let's select the silent portion. Scan selection. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom out, or sorry, we're gonna zoom in actually. Zoom in so that we can see this nicely. Okay. We are, and this is interesting, I find. Um, we are getting, it starts off, let's ignore this lower end because the lower end is, is a little bit tricky. Uh, it, it starts off uh, maybe around negative 105 and then creeps up to negative 104 dB by the end. Let's go ahead and call that an average of negative 104.5. What's interesting is that that is a lower noise floor than we had with the Motu M2. I do not think that that is a result of the Motu. My guess is that because the Zoom H4n is battery powered and not connected to any other devices, there's almost nothing else uh, affecting the signal chain. Whereas with the Motu M2, it's going out through USB into my PC. There are other USB devices connected in. It's connected into, uh, you know, uh, mains power. And there is going to be all sorts of other noise in that system. So no matter how, you know, how much that Mo Motu tries, it's not completely isolated um, as the Zoom H4n is. That's just my guess. Let's check out the uh, the test sample without the Durham. Okay, so let's... Now, this one I had to amplify five decibels in order to get this level with the, the Durham. Yet, I believe... I've got to go back and look, but I believe, if I remember, it was like 90... Uh, maybe 95% that we had this gain set. So it was 25 for the Durham and like 90 to 95 without the Durham. That's an incredible difference. All right, so let's go ahead and play this sample here. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Chasing Quality. This is Jake with you, and with us, as always, is RJ. RJ, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, fantastic. Okay, now let's record a moment of silence.
Well, hello. Now here, I can actually hear that. I can hear that noise. I, I don't have my my uh, uh, headphones cranking. I've got them at a, at a normal lis normal listening uh, volume, but I can hear that noise where I couldn't hear it on the other one. So let's let's capture that silence there. We're gonna scan the selection, and let's zoom in. Let's zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Move this down here. Let's zoom in one more here. All right, that is pretty much negative 98 dB all the way across. Now, if my, if my testing conditions are fair, if I've got a fair setup, I really feel like I do. I mean, I'm not sure what else I could do to necessarily make this any fairer. What this shows is that using the Cathedral Pipes Durham Mark II with the Zoom H4n and the SM58 microphone, you reduced the noise level by 6.5 decibels. That is substantial. That, that, that's, that's an incredible amount that is being reduced um, by simply adding the $65 device into the signal chain. Now, if you like the SM58 and you want to use it, it does require gain. And the Zoom H4n is going to make it noisy because you have to crank those preamps up. 60, this 6.5 means that I don't have to do any noise reduction in post unless I've got some sort of you know background noise that's annoying. This isn't background noise. This is just noise in the signal chain from the preamplifier. It's crazy. So I would say that on the Motu M2, uh, there wasn't a huge difference. 2.5 decibels. Um, I think that's a difference, but that could be explained by other things. On the Zoom, though, it's incredible and totally worth the money. So there you have it. The tests speak for themselves. Okay, so my final thoughts on this device uh, are that the a, a mic activator is a very cool device. Uh, it's a great way to lower the noise on noisy preamplifiers. They're not going to necessarily be for everyone, though. If you have a dynamic microphone that doesn't need a ton of gain, uh, and, is, and is inherently pretty silent, you're going to be good to go. If you've got a preamplifier that's got a really good amount of gain, uh, you're, you're probably going to be okay because you're not going to have to crank it up to too high of a level. If you've got a microphone, though, like the Shure SM58 or anything that requires even more power, such as this SM7B, you will likely want a mic activator of some form. For my use case, where I have the Zoom H4n Pro as a portable field recorder, it has noisy preamps, and it's worth it for me to have the microphone activator, especially in combination with a microphone like the SM58, which requires a, a significant amount of gain. It, it, it's a noticeable level of noise reduction, uh, bo both in the quiet parts and then the noise that it's going to add to my voice. Uh, so I don't have to do any sort of denoise um, noise removal, and that's, that's really nice. Um, for my other microphone, my Cam Spectrum Dynamic Microphone, that's a pretty quiet microphone, and I really don't think that I would notice much of a difference using an activator or not using an activator. So my recommendation is uh, if you think you need a mic activator based on some of the um, use cases that I've mentioned, I would recommend getting the Durham Mark II maybe first. You know, Try that out and see if it makes a significant difference. If it does... And then you want to, you know, maybe take it up to the next level. Maybe you can consider a cloud lifter, but I honestly haven't compared the two. I've seen podcastage. He he has done uh, some comparisons of the cloud lifter to the Durham Mark II and didn't really notice much of a difference. So I don't think that the extra, what is it, like $80, $84 to get the cloud lifter is worth it. I was able to get two of these Durham Mark IIs for the cost of one cloud lifter. And that was that, that allowed me to complete my stereo set for my uh, field recording, um, my field recording kit. So again, the Durham Mark II, pretty cool device, not necessary for everybody, but if you need it, it's going to be uh, a really important addition to your kit. If you haven't checked out our podcast, please check us out. We're on Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, any of the major podcasting platforms. You can also check out the link below in the description to go straight to our website where you can see all the podcasts there. Until next time, keep chasing that quality because you know I will.